So here we have a, the hypothesis that the mean is equal to 115 and then the alternate is that the mean is not equal to 115. So given that our sample mean is 107, so let's go ahead and write that down. And then our up here in our standard deviation is 27, n is 44, alpha is 0 0.05. So I'm going to write all that down. And our population standard deviation was 27, n is 44, and then alpha is 0 0.05 and then the um, the mean of the sampling distribution uh, was given to us was our hypothesis that we're testing is 115 this is H O oh, so that's our null H 0 or H O is our null now Remember, the area under the curve is always equal to 1 since our hypothesis is equal or not equal to, that is always a two-tailed test. And let me just show you real quick in the PowerPoint, and it's in the book too, but So if you want to use this as you're working, so a two-tailed hypothesis test is used when the alternative hypothesis is expressed as not equal to, okay? So if you draw your curve, your rejection areas are going to be in your tails. And the way I always remember it is, is the highlighted area is the rejection area. So here and here, if my test statistic falls in that area, I'm going to reject. Okay, so if we plug into our formula to get our t test statistic, so our mean of our sample and then our mean of our sampling distribution, And then the standard deviation was 27. And then the square root of n is 44. So I'm just going to do this in Excel so you can actually see what I'm doing. And let me, all right, so. I'm going to do equals, and the uh, top was 107 minus 115 divided by um, 27 divided by the square root of 44. Okay, so our critical sorry our test statistic is negative 1.97 so that's what we're testing so I'm gonna go ahead and write that down and on your homework you would put that in as your answer for your test statistic negative 1.97 now this is a two-tailed test and alpha is 0 0.05 so for your two-tailed test if you go to your book, so a two-tailed test is we have to divide that by two because 0 0.05 has to be split into two tails. So if you look here, 0 0.025, our critical value is 1.96. You may want to make a note for the two-tailed test, you have to divide alpha by two. 
So R, when you add or when you put in your critical values, you have two. You have a negative 1.96 and you have a positive 1.96. And I think I missed that the first time because I forgot to put both values. Now, negative 1.97 is what I'm testing. Negative 1.97 is going to be just beside a little bit less than negative 1.96. So since my test statistic doesn't fall in between, okay, if it fell in between, I would accept the null. But since they, it didn't fall in between my two values here, I've got to reject because it's in the critical rejection area. So when you're checking this, um, it does not fall within the critical values. You have to reject. Okay, and then the last part is to get your p-value. So to get your p-value, we're looking at our um, test statistic, which was negative 1.97. So if we do equal norm.s.distribution and put in negative 1.97 and we since it's negative we don't have to subtract it from 1 to get our p-value. So this is um, a one tail. This is the left tail. So if we need the p-value has to be, since it's two tails, we have to multiply that by two. And so our p-value, we're gonna round to three decimal places. So 0 0.049, and I believe you could have put 0 0.049 and it'd be right. Um, Negative 1.97. So for this last part, just to clarify, it says round to three decimal places as needed. So what you should do is, so take the one tail P value and round it to three. So 0 0.0, that would round to 0 0.025, then times it by two and then you would get the p-value of 0 0.05. So that is how you do a two-tailed test. Let me know if you have any questions.